Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech and going back to March of 2017, AMD took the world by surprise with the Ryzen, uh, first generation Ryzen processors. While they made up a ton of ground areas like instructions per clock and single thread of performance, they weren't good enough to overtake Intel with their higher clock speeds, but they did make up enough, priced well enough, and the increased core count made them very popular amongst many enthusiasts and a lot of my customers. <clears throat> Fast forward to next year, we have Ryzen 2000, which is known as Zen Plus, and the 12 nanometer platform versus the 14, the previous generation. And that had better clock speeds, better boosting speeds, um, more efficient um, core because they're using 12 nanometer, uh, and a bump in single thread performance. Not enough to close the gap of say like an 8700K, but enough to close the gap to make them even more relevant. And then Ryzen 3000 came out and it, le it leaped, leapt ahead of Intel and single thread performance at the same clock speeds and going as so far as f at 500 megahertz faster, they were about even in single thread performance. So like 9900K at five gigahertz would perform similar to a Ryzen 3000 uh, chip at 4.5 gigahertz respectively. So going to my one of my more recent videos should you go from a ryzen 2600 to a 3600 the answer to that was no but if you're on first gen ryzen which is going to be a few hundred megahertz slower an older uh, processing node a larger processing node less power efficient and a less single thread performance it actually might make sense but let's take a look at the test bench how i handled all the testing scenarios and then come to the conclusion if it's time or should you wait for Ryzen 4000. Okay, test bench time. Just a few things to go over. They weren't identical. There's reasons for it, but those reasons just don't matter because it didn't make any bit of performance difference. So the Ryzen 3000 or 30, Ryzen 5 3600 chip is in standard test bench. Um, so it's gonna include 3600 megahertz memory, three products of Flavid B Quiet, the Dark Rock Pro 4, the Pure Power 11 and the Silent Base 801. Some of the differences with the Ryzen 5 1600 is I use a Wraith Prism cooler. Main reason why is I didn't get over 60 degrees. And we're not talking over ambient, we're talking total, so didn't really matter. These tests are 2666 megahertz. I did run these tests also at 3000 and there was no difference from my testing on this. But since 2666 is officially the memory supported, and what AMD says is the maximum that it will support, that's what these tests are going to be. But once you hit about 2666, going to 3000 didn't really make a difference here. Um, same graphics card, uh, different power supply, but it's still a very good power supply. It's a 2B plus A minus power supply and open air test bench. So nothing all that interesting. Uh, testing methodology has not changed. So games have four Chrome tabs open and YouTube video playing on loop. Well, it's just 10 hours long. Uh, a couple different monitoring programs. So we're gonna have, you know, um, temperature monitoring, MSI afterburner, CPUZ, stuff like that. Going over to the game settings. So motion blur is always off. Secondary monitor at all times, 1080p. Uh, precision boost is used. Uh, XMP or DOCP is used. Uh, in all the tests except for the 1600 I actually just ran it at 2666 and 1.2 volts and it was fine uh, CL15 in that case I do set the fans to normalize but we're not dealing with thermal issues here and the synthetics only had just a couple programs open now here is a list of all the processors and a couple of things to know uh, the 9900K, 9600K and uh, 8700K were all core overclocks Actually, as was the 1600, we'll get to that. Uh, the A700K, I had issues getting that memory dialed in, uh, so I just ran a 2400 megahertz kit that I had since that's officially supported. I don't want to mess with timings, but honestly, I don't think running a 3000 is really gonna make a difference, but running a 3600 uh, kept crashing. So, um, precision boost overdrive is used for all the Ryzen 3000 and 2000 chips. The Ryzen 5 1600, um, all I did was just basically enable in the BIOS a, a boost function within ASUS. So I ran 3.6 all core overclock. As you know, I only mess with features within the BIOS such as precision boost or Intel, enhanced turbo, all the stuff. I don't do manual overclocking in my tests. 
um, and then memory is running respectively for each of the platforms. If it's not listed, then that means they're they're running either a 3,000 or 3,600 megahertz kit, depending on what's officially supported. Now, going over to the first uh, test here, we have Cinebench. So we're only going to focus on the bottom half here, and that is that the 1600 does pick up the trail quite a bit. Um, it does better than the 404 a thread 3400G, but what's interesting to note is the 3600 scores at, at a 4.2 precision boost all core uh, speed, scoring around 30, 38, 32 versus what, 2652. And that is, that's a pretty big gain. I mean, we're looking at over, what, 11, almost 1,200 points. That's almost 50%. Not quite, but it's really close. It's around 40, 45. So, so far, at least in this productivity workload, there's a huge increase. Um, looking at Blender BMW, uh, the increase really isn't much there. However, we are seeing a bigger increase from 2,600 to 3,600 in this case. But even going from a 1600 to a 2600, there's about a half a second drop in BMW. Um, but we went from about six and a half to about a little under five. So it was about a minute and probably a minute and three quarter, like 1.6, 1.7 minutes. So that definitely is a pretty nice increase there. Mind you, we're also 600 megahertz faster. Uh, looking into games here, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider where Intel is dominating the top two slots here. Uh, we have the 1600 coming in quite a bit lower than everybody else. So 1080p is going to be where the really big drop off is. You know, we go from 157 to 119 FPS. So that's a pretty, pretty big drop. Uh, interesting note, 3400G in a couple of these tests on this one did not do well at 1080p. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure why. I think it might be a cache issue because they don't have a lot of cache. I thought it was PCI Express at 8x limitations, but then... 1440p would have a bigger impact. Uh, at 1440p, there's much less of a drop off, but there still is a little bit of a drop off. But at least at 1080p in this game, it's almost 40 FPS, which is a pretty big difference. Going over to Four Honor Extreme, motion blur off. Uh, the 3400G did quite bad at 1080p comparison 112. Um, but looking at the 1600, it did 130.9, so just a smidge behind the 30 to, or the 2600. But when we look at the 3600 precision boost, it's a it's right around 10 FPS difference. So not that big. That's going to put you around 7% difference, but definitely a little bit of difference. At 1440p, it's much less, only 4. Uh, that's around a 4% increase there. Now, Ghost Recon Wildlands, uh, we are running high settings, motion blur off as well in this case. Again, the 3400G does not fare well, but it's interesting to note, the 1600G has a, falls a bit behind uh, both the 2600 and the 3600. So the 2600 seems to fare a lot closer to the 3600. So we go from basically 107 FPS to 88, and then we'll round out to 89. So we're around 18, yeah, 18 FPS, which is a decent um, difference there, especially trying to hit that 1080p 144 hertz level. Uh, but lastly, we have another AMD based title, and that is the Division 2, uh, where AMD actually tops the charts here. Uh, 3400G again does not do well. Again, I think that's due with like just the way the cache works and everything like that. Uh, but looking at the 1600, we are 93 FPS versus 108. So right there, we're about 15, um, so around 16, 17%. So when I first started benchmarking this, I had to run these a couple times. I didn't. The 2600 was a lot closer to the 3600 in most cases, but what I found was there was definitely no clear increase. Clock speeds are so close on these two chips, so you know, running a 373 at all core speed versus a 36. The single thread performance helps in some cases, other cases it just doesn't. There's still a little bit of a GPU bottleneck, or at least the kind of bottleneck isn't single threaded. But looking at synthetic workload, there's a huge increase upwards of 50% in some cases, 20 to 30% others. Gaming, I think on the low end, it was 7%. On the high end, it was a little over 20%. So that brings us to the conclusion. Should you spend roughly $200 on a 3600 if you have a 1600? That's a little bit of a tough sell still because that's still $200. And it's a fantastic chip for $200. 
And in fact, some cases during the holiday season, you get a 3600X for $200, which in my opinion, with a better bin piece of silicone and their better, more refined processing, you know, we're what, four months into the development cycle, Ryzen 3000, uh, you might actually get even more tangible performance. So this is kind of going to be my take from experience. I would say a 3600 would be a good buy if you get if you get it for probably 160 to 170, which you're not really going to go into. But if you can get a 3600X for around like 200, 210, and a lot of people are getting precision boost in the 4.3 to 4.4 versus 4.1 and 4.2, that's going to give you another 5% performance increase roughly in most cases. And now we're going to be in games mostly 25% increase. And from there, yeah, I would say it's definitely worth it. If you really want to get that extra frame, if you're kind of struggling, you have a good GPU, uh, but you're kind of not hitting that 100 FPS plus, plus mark you want to in your games. That being said, we are probably 6 to 10 months maybe, we'll say 6 9 months, away from Ryzen 4000. At least that's what the rumors are, which is going to have... Higher instructions per clock, higher clock speeds, higher single thread performance. So if you're not really hurting for performance, in that case, I would definitely wait. So um, I'll put a link in the description below where you can get a Ryzen 5 3600 or 3600X. I think those are the two most relevant things uh, in this video. If you liked the video, liked it, dislike, dislike, leave a comment, get subscribed. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see you all later on down the road.